You can turn practically anything into a pincushion. These are little um, heart-shaped uh, picture frames um, and I just put some fabric in the centre. You like that one? Some fabric in the centre and decorated with some flowers. No sewing machine involved, just a little bit of hand sewing and they're very very quick, very very easy and they're pincushions so they're very useful as well. This is how I made them. If you saw my um, little teacup pincushion tutorial, I was saying that you can turn practically anything into a pincushion. This is a little photo frame, and I'm going to show you how I made this. Um, so this is how I bought it. It's just from Hobbycraft. But you can buy these in a lot of craft shops in all different shapes and sizes. So I'm going to take out the, the glass and the paper and carefully dispose of that because we don't need the glass at all. And then I'll need to put some stuffing and my fabric inside the frame. So I've got bits of ribbons and beads and flowers. And I've got my glue gun to hand as well because I want things to dry solidly and very, very quickly. And that's hot glue. So that'll do the trick. And I'm going to have the end of the toe of a stocking. Enough fabric to just cover around there. And my wadding that goes in the centre. Now the reason that I have this is so that I can push my wadding inside and the stocking wraps around it and keeps it all in a nice shape so that it doesn't spill out all over the place when I put the fabric around it. And just squish that into the, oops, into the frame and just make sure it fits, it's quite firm, but we don't want too much fabric or too much wadding sticking out of the back, so I do want to put the back of the frame back on again. So I think that's going to be fine. So the next thing I'm going to do is take my fabric, and again that's just enough to wrap all the way around, and that'll gather it. So it's no particular shape. I suppose it's um, it's kind of a circle-ish, but as long as the fabric's wide enough to cover it. So my fabric will be about five inches across. My picture frame is probably about two and a half, so you probably need about twice the width of fabric as you do. So all I'm going to do is take my needle and thread and do a running stitch all the way around the edge. So I gathered all the way around the edge, so you can see I can start to pull that up a bit. I've used quite strong thread as well. Um, if you don't have a very strong thread, then double your thread over to make it stronger. Because when you put your batting inside, you need to pull this up to gather it. And this is going to be at the back, so I'm not worried about it being particularly neat. Before I tie that off, I'm just going to push it back through the hole and make sure that it, ooh, <laughs> it fits. Push it back through the hole and just make sure that I've got enough uh, of a gather there. Now, that, that actually meets quite well, so I haven't got any gaps around the edge, but I have got a big gap at the back. So if I'd have gathered that up really tight, then um, I would have had a gap. So now I know that it fits, I'm just going to sew up. Don't worry about this being messy. Just sew over to hold that closed. And then I'll tie off the thread and we'll get this glued in place. Okay. So again, I'm just making sure that fits perfectly. Right, so I'm going to take my glue gun and I'm gluing just on the inside of the bag. I'm trying not to get the glue onto the front, although if you do have a mishap and you get the glue on the front, you can always decorate it with a flower or a bow or something. So do be careful of these glue guns if you haven't used one before. They get very, very hot. And not only do they get hot, the glue dries very quickly as well. So once your glue's on there, you have to add quickly. If you don't want to use a glue gun, then I'd suggest um, something like a silicon glue, which will take a lot longer to dry, probably overnight, but you will have the strength from it. So I'm pushing this in from the back, and I'm going to do that really quickly because that glue's drying as we speak. If you don't want to get too close to your glue, then there they are. Use a pair of tweezers. And if you do have any straggly strands when this dries, they actually pick off really easily. And you will have, uh, as you're using your glue gun, like 
very fine hair like strands and again they just pick away really easily. That glue dried before I'd finished so I'll just squish a little bit more into the hole and you can see how that's that's sitting quite nicely. Just trying to keep that heart shape. Tuck those gathers in there. And these are those little strands of glue. It's like mozzarella cheese, but they do pick away afterwards. Or use a heat gun if you have one and melt them away. So again, I'm just waiting for that glue to dry. Nearly there before I start decorating. And remember, I don't want to. I don't want too much fabric at the back because I want to put the back on it again. You might want to hang this on the wall. Right. Let's get the fun bit uh, on the way then. This is this is where we're decorating. So I've got some blue flowers and they match with my fabric. I'm going to decorate it a little bit different to this one. Um, I've got yellow. I have the white. Look quite nice. When you're snipping off the wires, make sure you're using old scissors because we don't want to spoil your dressmaking shears cutting through wire. So just trim those off. And then, using your glue gun again, pop them wherever you think looks good. You'll find that anything that you're decorating like this tends to look better if you do them in odd numbers. So three roses, I think, look better than two roses, or five roses would look better than four roses, etc, etc. And I like the way that it's kind of not balanced as well. I think I'm going to put a couple of small, oh look at this glue, a small of pieces here because I've got some glue on the fabric. I'll see if I can get that off. It doesn't want to come off, but I'm not worried. I'm just going to pop some little flowers over the top. Those will do. I'm going to use my tweezers here because I don't want to get too close to this glue. And again, I'm doing those in threes. A lovely little Mother's Day gift, these wouldn't they? Or just a, a, a present for somebody who sews because they're so quick to make, they look gorgeous, they're not particularly expensive, but I think they look as though you know you're either very gifted or you've spent an awful lot of money. I'm just going to put some more blue flowers on the other side because I think it needs balancing. Three more flowers to go on this side. And then I think we'll have a bow on this one as well. So the blue flowers balance off this side. Those white flowers look very heavy, so I'm going to put a bow <coughs> over this side to balance that. just underneath the flowers there. Then just to sit in the middle of the bow I'm going to place a button. have some of these little strings of beads all in the same colour which are quite sweet. So I'll cut off three pieces again of odd numbers and those are going to go underneath my bow. I should have put those on first really but that's fine because it's not quite dry yet. There we are. So that 
that's quite a, a big blob of glue so I'm going to leave that to dry for just one second and to switch your glue gun off when you're not using it. And then we'll turn over and put the back back on again. You could glue that as well if it keeps bursting out. This is why I didn't want too much fabric on the back. And then just turn the little things back again. I don't know what they're called. There. So the back's nice and neat, so it will hang up. All of these little strands of glue, when they're dry, just pick those away. Can't see any more. And then stick in your pins.